Hello everyone, Benito here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now it's been a while since I've spoken in any detail about my actual research that I'm doing for my PhD here at the University of Bristol on tropical butterflies. But if you've been following my Instagram, you will know that I've been spending a lot of time looking after some tropical butterflies in these beautiful greenhouses here at the university. Now these greenhouses are owned by the School of Biological Sciences and on face value, they look like pretty standard greenhouses, to be honest, until we go into this room here where it gets considerably more humid. And inside this room here, there are all these cages that contain some pretty special animals. These butterflies are all part of the tribe Heliconini, native to the rainforests of Central and South America. Now, before the pandemic, most of our insectary work would have been done in the idyllic Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Panama. But since March, by supplying them with the correct host plants and tropical conditions, we've been able to continuously breed them right here in Bristol. And I have to say, it's been quite a success. Butterflies are certainly pretty happy here. There are caterpillars on the passiflora, there's egg laying behavior, and some courtship. In many instances, I've seen a male fluttering over a female, wafting sex pheromones in her direction. And most of the time, she's not that interested. She raises her abdomen vertically to make it very difficult for the male to mate with her. And eventually, you'll get the message. But trust me, they're not half persistent. <laughs> Even though I don't study these Heliconius and Dryas butterflies that much. They're still perfectly good animals for me to show you something that I am interested in. Now, I'm a visual ecologist. I'm interested in how animals have evolved to see the world. And butterfly eyes, I mean, you don't need me to tell you this, they're pretty spectacular. They're pretty beautiful structures. And they have a property which very few insects have. So, I'll just take this fella. And it's off to the lab. Right, here I am with my trusty butterfly in the lab, and it's time to examine its eye. And we do that using this particular weird piece of kit here. This is what is known as an ophthalmoscope. Now you may be familiar with the term ophthalmology that's used in medical research to diagnose sort of retinal disorders and things like that in humans. Basically what this thing consists of is an objective lens, a camera, and an LED light which will help us illuminate the butterfly eye. And this is all connected to my laptop here so we can see the butterfly eye in all its glory. But what exactly are we looking for here? Well, we're looking for a very special property of butterfly eyes called eye shine. Now you may be familiar with eye shine if you've ever gone around with a torch looking for animals at night. And it's the result of what is known as a tapetum lucidum. And what a tapetum lucidum is, is it's basically a mirror. It reflects back light that hits the back of the eye. And that gives the light a second chance to be absorbed by the photoreceptors, which is very useful if you're a nocturnal animal moving about at night when there isn't that much light to go around. But what's really cool is that once you expose these butterfly eyes to light, you get the eye shine, but it disappears very quickly. And that's hopefully what I'm going to demonstrate today. So it's time to get our beautiful, well-behaved, butterfly out and what we're going to do is we're going to place the butterfly in one of these little plastic tubes. After slotting and immobilizing the head in the tubes we then suspend the butterfly upside down in front of our ophthalmoscope with plasticine. This shouldn't harm the butterfly in the slightest but it means it's now in the perfect position to witness its eye shine in all its glory. Now, in order to see this spectacular eye shine, we need to do something which we call dark adaptation. Actually, all that means is keep the butterfly in the dark. So, if you'd excuse me. Ah, come on, when, how do, ah. But before I turn the LED light on, it's time to make sure that the eye is in the right position and in focus. Now, as we know, all insects have what we call compound eyes, which are very different to the eyes we have. 
each compound's eye is made up of loads of tiny optical units called omatidia. And the place where we're most likely to find the eye shine is a position where many omatidia are facing directly at the lens of the camera, and that's a region called the pseudopupil. Yes, okay. So, we're gonna turn the LED light off now and wait 10 minutes. Right, about 10 minutes have gone past now. I don't know why I'm whispering. I'm just gonna press record on the imaging software. Three, two, one. Wow! Look at that, but then look how quickly it disappears. The yellow ones go first, then the red ones. What a beautiful mosaic that was. That really was amazing. Not each omatidium within the compound eye of the butterfly is the same. They have different combinations of photoreceptors which absorb different wavelengths of light. So those two yellow and red omatidia there are probably um, suggesting that those two different types of omatidia have different what we call spectral sensitivities. They're receptive to different types of light. So across the butterfly eye you've got this fantastic mosaic, a retinal mosaic. And what's even cooler is that every species of butterfly is different. Here's a panel of four closely related species, and as you can see, there's pretty noticeable variation in colour and diversity of colours within the mosaic. And variation even seems to exist within the same species too, as can be seen here in these videos of the same butterfly, but with the camera positioned in front of different eye regions. Well, hopefully I've convinced you of just how amazing the vision, the ecology and behaviours of these butterflies really are. But I think it's time to take this beautiful driest butterfly back to the greenhouses where it belongs so my fellow researchers can carry on studying their brain evolution. Now the butterflies that I study don't end up quite as lucky as this driest individual unfortunately because after I've studied those, done all my experiments on the ophthalmoscope behind me, I then have to sample their heads, which is then used for later analysis to look at their eye anatomy. And that's what these little tubes are here. They're all inside each of those tubes is a little butterfly head preserved in ethanol solution. But I think that story will have to wait for another day. In the meantime, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay updated with all my wildlife and science adventures. In the meantime, it's time to put this fella back to the greenhouses where it belongs. See you, folks. Let's get scratching. But in the meantime, I've got to put this little fella Oh no!